Let me see you, and let me see Jesus working through you. The very credentials these people are waving around as something special, I am tearing up and throwing out with the trash. And why? Because of Christ. For the sake of Christ Jesus, I have lost all things. I consider them dung that I may gain Christ and be found in him. I want to think about this for a moment. We're trying to help young married couples stay out of debt. But it's not so that you can become proud and look down on other people who haven't had good mentors. But I'm thinking about this right now. Are there some who don't have the freedom to go where God would send you because you would tell me, because I'm in debt? Or I am in bondage? I am in jail? See, there are some things we can get ourselves into that put us into something that keeps us from really running ahead with Christ. Paul said, I want to consider all the things that might tie me down to a selfish, self-centered, me-first life because I want to be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Some of you have done this well, and you've done it for years and years. But I already guess that there's no one in the room that can say, me and Paul, we really have. You know, Paul's pretty bold to say this. I count it all, and I have counted it all. Later on, he'll tell us, I've got high ideals, and I haven't really attained to them all yet, but I want to hold on to that which I have attained. But at this point, he's talking about being clean on the inside. And I do want you to see Jesus through me. I don't want you to see a cheap imitation of Jesus, because I could live a double life. What I'd rather do is just tell the truth, be a man of integrity, let my flaws shine through so that maybe you might be called to even help me with my flaws if they're getting in the way of representing Jesus as his ambassador in our generation. It's that which is through faith in Christ that we can count as the righteousness that comes from God. A couple weeks ago, in a message entitled, Holding and shining, Paul wrote to us in this church, this letter to Philippi. He said, as you hold firmly or hold forth or hold fast, as you hold firmly to the word of life, the living word. Logos, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's Logos. So we're to hold firmly to the word, the living word. And that's Zoe, that's abundant life. It's not just biological life. There's a word for that, bios. Zoe is an abundant, increasing, everlasting life. It's the life of Christ. Now I want to hold on to the word of life. And by learning a little bit about the language that this letter has been passed on down to us, I might be able to squeeze some life out of this word, koinonia. That's the way it looks in Greek, and here's transliteration of it, koinonia. I heard Clyde talk about we need koinonia groups in our Sunday school. We need fellowship groups. That's, some of you can say, I know what koinonia means. It means fellowship, right? means fellowship. So what is a fellowship group? Well, 
Uh, you have to have it organized. Should be 7 p.m. because that's a good time for fellowship groups, right? Someone's home and someone should make the coffee and, and maybe some decaf because a lot of our people, they drink their calf in the morning and decaf at night, right? I mean, isn't that the rules for a good koinonia group? Coffee. Um, I don't know. These days, it's still good to have donuts, right? In that golden circle, isn't it a koinonia group? I mean, don't you meet together and share life together and share experiences together? What do you serve there at, at Golden Circle? Do you ever have, like, finger foods? Wanda, like what? What might they serve? Sweets. sweets. Oh, okay. So all for sweets at the Koinonia Group. Would you clap your hand if you'd like sweets? Uh-huh. Okay. We still have some. But who would like to have some carrots and celery? And it is that, sharing an affinity for something. We had koinonia over that table when I split that little piece of chicken with Barry Friesen. There was a fellowship there. We had a shared experience, and it wasn't sweet. It wasn't sour. It was just chicken, but mmm, it tasted good. We shared that experience. Paul says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power, dunamis, the power of his resurrection, anastasis. We sang about resurrection today. We think about the power that Jesus had. Paul said, I want to know this power of his resurrection and the partnership in his sufferings, the participation in his sufferings, the communion in his sufferings, the sharing in his sufferings. Yes, the koinonia in his sufferings, the fellowship in his sufferings. So some might say, well, in the church, we have that when we have mission trips. Because, you know, we suffer together on mission trips. But please don't put me with somebody that snores. Because <laughs> I need my sleep. Well, we suffer in... Business meetings. Pastor, I suffer every Sunday morning when you look down at the clock and just ignore it. <laughs> Paul says, I want to know the power of his resurrection and the koinonia in his sufferings. Becoming, being transformed, being morphed like him in his death. And so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. And this somehow doesn't have anything to do with doubt. But just how is it that God is going to take me through? It's going to be one way or another. It might be a deathbed experience. You know, some people think, yeah, if, if, uh, you know, if I have to suffer for Christ, I will. But you know, some people, when you really get there and you suffer, there's no grace that comes out of it. No mercy comes out of it. You suffer in your own strength rather than suffering with Christ. And I think I might have a tendency to do that. If I've got a headache, I don't really, I just want to go away and, you know, go to my Lord and Master Tylenol. Take some, get away. If I'm sick, I don't necessarily even call upon the elders of the church to pray for me because it's not that big a deal. I'll just suffer through this thing all by myself. No, I'm not going to write a hymn while I'm sick. I'm just going to lay here and Maybe I won't whine and gripe and complain to very many people. But some of those hymns are written by the person on her sickbed or her deathbed. J. Vernon McGee, I think that he had a year to live. And so he gets in his mind, well, then I'm going to preach through the Bible in five years' time. But, but the, the doctor, doctor just doctor said, just yeah, said. but I've got a plan. I'm going to preach through the Bible on the radio for five years. And he did. Guess what? He didn't die. And he preached through the whole Bible in five years' time, and then he did it again, and then he did it again. Tom, Acts 2.42. Why don't you come on up here and just read for us?
they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Koinonia is in there. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And that's what we want to do. And in fact, we call Paul one of the sent ones. He's, he's an apostle. He called himself an apostle. That early church, they devoted themselves to whatever the apostles had to pass along. You know, th those apostles, the ones who walked with Jesus for three years, asking him questions. What did you mean about this? You know, learning the stories and the parables. So the early church devoted themselves to digging deep into the lives of those who had walked with Jesus. And then even Peter wrote and said, pay attention to the letters of Paul. Peter, an apostle, said, pay close attention because he knows the mysteries of the gospel. His letters along with the other scriptures. So Peter gives credence to Paul. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching to the what? What else? To the fellowship. To the breaking of bread to and the, to prayer. To the fellowship, and, and that's koinonia. And remember, it's not suffering, it's sharing. So a lot of times we'll say, okay, we've got to design a su successful model for our church. We need to have Bible teaching. We need to have prayer groups. We need to have the breaking of bread, which the way it's written there with a definite article, we view as the Lord's Supper. The fellowship, you know, what's the difference between the breaking of bread and the fellowship? Well, you break bread at home. You eat together in your homes, in your koinonia groups. But this sharing, we would further read that nobody has need of anything when it comes down to it because they shared all things in common. This koinonia means what is mine is yours. Okay, that is rendered fellowship in some versions, but it's koinonia in Acts 2.42. Now, in Romans 15.26, can you look that up? The same word koinonia is used for contribution. So if we're going to have a koinonia group, let's just say, it's, it's about more than the coffee and sweets and celery and carrots. It's also about the contribution. What, what's that say there? Uh, 1526. Mm. For Macedonia and Achaia were pleased to make a contribution for the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. Okay. Remember, Paul was out on the missionary journey. And twice, two years in a row, he's collecting money for Jerusalem, for the famine that had been prophesied in Jerusalem. And at this point, koinonia is sharing in the giving toward a need that has been expressed. We're all going to share together. Our cooperative program that we give to it, out of our offering every single week, is a koinonia gift. It's not just us doing something on our own. We, we've been asked to contribute to share in an offering that will train Brandon at Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary by subsidizing somewhat his education, by sending people on their first mission trip. I think Brandon is a registered student, at least they used to. If you went on an international mission trip, they would subsidize it for you, your first one, if you went overseas. Journeymen, people who will go on, college students or college graduates can go on two years as a journeyman. And go to another country. High school students. I think Ben Rosenau went to Alaska as part of our summer missionary program. All that's provided for through our koinonia, our contribution to the cooperative program. Supports our missionary, half our missionary budget for our foreign missionaries. Okay, the next verse I want you to read, 1 Corinthians 10, 16. Communion. We don't normally use this word communion as an equivalent of koinonia, but it is. What's your Bible say there? Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? The Lord's Supper table in this passage is referenced as koinonia. It is truly a shared experience, and it is beautiful when we say, let us all wait until everyone has been served. That's more precious to me, to wait over that little wafer and to wait over that little cup of juice. That's more precious to me, or at least it's in the same line as sharing a little piece of chicken with Barry because it's the church doing this thing together in remembrance of what Christ did for us. And my last example, partnership. 
And that's from the same letter, Philippians chapter 1, verse 5. And I believe, go ahead and find it. But I believe it's when Paul is saying, we have a special relationship. And we have had it from the very first day. And we're going to have it all the way up till the day of Christ Jesus. Read. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Read before that. So what's he saying because of? In all my prayer, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Folks, this is what it is for us to be a real church. Church on Sunday morning, you know, this is, a, is one small expression. This is one meal out of seven days of potential meals we could be sharing together. This is one study of God's Word or one opportunity to sing songs together. One among a whole seven days worth of potential places where we can go out two by two or three by three and witness to others, or gather together and devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching, to the prayer, to the breaking of bread, and to the fellowship of whatever, the mission koinonia, the relief koinonia. Thanks, Tom. Not that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. So maybe the very next day, Paul's going to struggle with some of his own rights, his own inner struggle with his own sense of self and identity and his rights and, and his selfishness. He probably will because right here now he says, although I just said I've counted it all loss, right here he admits I haven't really arrived at my goal. And I won't. I won't be made perfect until that final day. But here's one thing I'm going to do. I am going to press on. Even if I fall flat on my face. You know, if we fall flat on our faces at Bell Road Baptist Church, we ought to have a number of hands saying, hey, you all right? You all right? Come on. Get us up. Shake us off. Come on. And then even encourage you to sit and rest for a moment. Get some perspective. Or you could go on, run, run, run. What we're not going to have is a fellowship when you fall down because you, you sinned, you lost your temper, you did something stupid, just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. We don't want to kick you when you're down. That's not koinonia. That's not sharing in your suffering. Sharing in your suffering is the pathos. To have koinonia with the pathos. To share the suffering. And we're called to share the suffering of Christ on the cross. And that's not an easy thing to do. But for some of us, when you got that movie, The Passion, and you watched it on the DVD, you didn't go and make popcorn. It's not a kind of a movie that you would make popcorn and drink a big soda with. It just isn't. If you watch that movie, it's because you want to somehow share, identify, with what Christ did for you. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome And the grave is over Jesus. 
11 verses from Philippians chapter 3. And Lord, they're familiar to many of us, but we thank you that that's a good thing, that we can tie these verses together with other men and women we've learned from, and songs that we've sung, and hymns. I pray, Lord, that you'll bless us with this fresh reading and interpretation of these 11 verses. Bless us to chew on these carefully, to savor these morsels together. May we become a sharing church, sharing our experiences, both good and tragic. May we share with other churches who are striving to listen to you and to do your will in this generation. Thank you, Lord. By your spirit, we know it's possible. So we thank you for blessing us and filling us with your spirit and we ask you to go with us now out into our mission fields and back to our homes. Bless us to have a good Christian witness until we meet again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Shake hands with one another and be friends. <laughs>